we're going to continue with that same investigation from the front side of our notes, but just with a little bit different perspective here on the back side. In problem number five, it says to draw in all possible diagonals from point G in the figure. So let's go ahead and do that. So remember, diagonal, if we're going from point G, that would mean any line segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. So there's one diagonal, two diagonals, three diagonals. Any other segments from G would just be a side. So like G to N would be a side, G to A would be a side. So we've got three diagonals there. And then in our next diagram, connect non-consecutive vertices. So G to I, G to J, G H or G K would just be sides. And then in our third one here from G to S, G to T, G to O, G to P, and G to S. So that would be all the diagonals from point G or from vertex G there. All right, now based on those, let's take a look at the table here. So the table is simply stating how many sides does the polygon have. So starting with hexagon, we would expect that to have six sides, and it does. How many triangles were formed? Well, one, two, three, four. We've got four interior triangles formed by those diagonals there. All right, and what did we say that the sum of the angles was in a hexagon? If you look back at the previous page, we had 720 degrees. All right, J, or actually G, H, I, J, K, if we look at how many sides does that polygon have, that would be a pentagon. How many triangles did it have? Well, it had three. If we looked at those diagonals there from G and counted the triangles. And then what is the interior angle sum for a pentagon? If you recall from the first page, that was 540 degrees. Stop sign. Okay, we would expect that to have eight sides. Every stop sign is an octagon. And so we look at how many triangles there are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the interior angle sum in any octagon is 1,080 degrees. All right. How is this table an illustration of the formula for the angle sum? Well, let's take a look at this from a slightly different vantage point here. What do we know about triangles in terms of their angle sums? We know triangle angle sums are always 180 degrees. Well, look at this hexagon here and look at all of the triangles. All of the angles and all of the triangles are forming the angles in the hexagon. So if we took just this part, this part, this part, and this part, all those four angles and those triangles would create this entire angle right here. Uh, this angle and this triangle would be that angle of the hexagon and so forth. So how that is helpful to us is we can see that the total angle sum for this hexagon can also be thought of as how many triangles there are. 180 degrees times four triangles also gets us to 720 degrees, All right? How many triangles are there here? Well, there's three of them. So the angle sums for all of these triangles would be three times 180 degrees, because there's three triangles, and three times 180 is 540 degrees. How many triangles are there in our stop sign here? There are six triangles, six times 180 degrees, is 1,080 degrees. So six triangles gets us to our 1,080 degrees. Now, how many triangles are there compared to the number of sides? Six sides, four triangles. Five sides, three triangles. Eight sides, six triangles. Do you notice the pattern there? There's always two less triangles created than the number of sides. So if there's six sides, subtract two from that, four triangles. Five sides, subtract two from it, three triangles. Eight sides, six triangles. If it were a 20-sided polygon, how many triangles would be formed? 20 minus two would give you 18 triangles created. All right? 
So if we think of this as n, we can see is it's always 2 less, the number of triangles is always 2 less than the number of sides. So we can state that kind of like this, n minus 2. And what did we do with the number of triangles to get the total angle sum? We multiplied it times 180, because that's how many degrees are in each triangle. So 180 times n minus 2 is actually a different way of thinking about the formula from the last page here. So if you want to flip back to the last page and think of this formula as 180 times n minus 2, that's another way of calculating it. Now notice basically the only difference between these two is that if we use the distributive property here, 180 times n, 180n. 180, 180 times a minus 2 is a minus 360. So both of these are equivalent to each other, but one might be a little bit easier than another depending on the situation. So maybe it's a little bit easier to use the n minus 2 times 180, or maybe it's easier to use 180 times n minus 360. It just kind of depends on whatever your situation is here. So let's just answer this question then formally. How is the table an illustration of the formula for the angle sum? There are always two less triangles than the number of sides. There are always two less triangles than the number of sides. So this is shown by n minus 2. There are 180 degrees in a triangle So the total angle sum is 180 degrees times n minus 2. So it's just a different way of thinking about it, but now you can see how we came up with the total angle sum for a polygon in two different ways. One based on the pattern on the table on the first page, and Another way of thinking about it is the number of triangles formed, each triangle representing 180 degrees, and n minus 2 is how many triangles there would be. Okay, number 7. Find the sum of all the exterior angles for each figure. Last unit we talked about what an exterior angle is. If you extend one of the sides out, the exterior angle is the angle formed on the outside of the polygon. So if we measure all of the exterior angles here, the ones formed on the outside, if we extend out one of the sides, we have 87 degrees, 81 degrees, 36 degrees, 79 degrees, and 77 degrees. So there are five of them. This must be a pentagon. In fact, it is a pentagon. So if we add those up, we'll notice the exterior angles, in this case, add up to 360 degrees. Okay, so in that pentagon, all the exterior angles add up to 360 degrees. All right, let's just put this together in our next one here. 105 degrees, okay, a linear pair would be 75 degrees right there, right? Because these two are supplementary to each other, linear pair supplementary. So one exterior angle is 75 degrees. But the linear pair over here would be the flip of that, so it would be 105 degrees. Uh, the linear pair right here for the exterior angle would be 90 degrees and the linear pair right here would be 90 degrees, all right? So here is our quadrilateral, and here are all of the exterior angles if we extend out each one of those sides, all right? So the first one was a pentagon. This one is a quadrilateral, four sides, so only four exterior angles, but if you add those up, what do you see? What do you find? 105 plus 75 plus 90 plus 90. Once again, we get 360 degrees. Interesting. Interior angle sums change depending on if it was a pentagon or a hexagon or an octagon or however many sides you had. The angle sums were different for the interior angles. This is not true for exterior angles. 
the exterior angles, no matter what polygon you choose, whether it's five sides or four sides or a thousand sides, the exterior angles will always add up to 360 degrees. If you don't believe me, sketch out a few more, try it out, but the exterior angles will always add up to 360 degrees. Okay, so that means our exterior angle sum conjecture, the sum of the exterior angles of any polygon is equal to 360 degrees. All right, last problem for today. Suppose that a polygon was an equal angular polygon, all equal angles, then by using the sums of the interior exterior angles, you could find the measure of each of the individual interior exterior angles. Write formulas for any equiangular n-gon, where n represents the number of sides. All right, so if this is equiangular, that means all of the angles are exactly equal to each other. Right? All these angles are equal to each other. Now in this case, uh, you know, for purposes of the problem here, it's a hexagon, but we're thinking of this as any generic polygon. So if these are all equal angles, then to get one of those angles, we just take the total angle sum, total angle sum, and divide it by the number of angles, which is the same as the number of sides. So total angle sum divided by the number of sides. By the way, the number of sides is going to be the same as the number of angles. So the total angle sum divided by the number of sides is going to give us what each one of these angles is going to be. They're all equal to each other because it is equiangular. So let's think about what that actually means as a formula. On the first page, we already came up with the formula for the total angle sum. There's two versions of it. So I'm just going to write one of the versions. One, one of the versions was 180 times n minus 2. So that's the total angle sum formula. And then divide it by the number of sides. So that's just n. So one interior angle, one angle, is found by just taking the total angle sum and dividing by the number of sides. So 180 times n minus 2 gets us that total angle sum divided by the number of sides. What about each of the exterior angles? Okay. So once again, since this is an equiangular polygon here, meaning all these angles are equal to each other, the exterior angles will also be equal to each other, because they're all linear pairs to the same measurement for the interior angle. Well, let's look back at the previous problem here. What was the total exterior angle sum? And divide that by the number of sides or angles. Well, the total exterior angle sum is easier than the total interior angle sum because the total exterior angle sum is always 360 degrees. So to calculate this, all we need to do is take 360 divided by the number of sides. So one exterior angle, again, all of these, both of these formulas are for equiangular polygons, why that works. So if they're all equal, all the angles are equal, then we simply will take 360 degrees, because that's always the exterior angle sum, and just divide by however many sides or angles there are. And then that will give us one of the exterior angle measurements.